Hi LEGO fans, yes it's another Ninjago set and this time it's a big one. Today we're going to unbox, speed build and review set number 70617 Temple of the Ultimate Ultimate Weapon from the Ninjago movie. With a part count of 1,403 pieces, this is the third largest set currently available from the Ninjago movie. The first, of course, is Ninjago City, followed by Destiny's Bounty. The coolest thing about this set, and the main reason I bought it, was for the seven minifigures that come with it. Not only are we getting Jungle Garmadon, but we're also getting all six of the ninjas, complete with hair. There's some other stuff as well. We've got this temple thingy here, and we've got a couple of dragons. I suppose those look quite cool but minifigures, minifigures, minifigures. Before we get too excited about having all of the minifigures in the same box, let's flip this over and take a look at the back. This gives us more of an idea of what to expect from the set, and the first thing I notice is I'm going to need more display space. Man, this thing is 15 inches wide. The temple itself looks like a very cool build, and from the back you can see there are a lot of rooms and cool interactive features inside. We're also getting two of these very cool looking temple guardians, and it looks like Garmadon might be in some trouble there, trapped inside that cage. Interactive features include a large rock that swings through the doorway, a movable scroll, and a secret passageway. We also have various obstacles and booby traps for the ninjas to contend with. I can't wait to get this built, so let's open up the box and see what we've got inside. Here's everything we've got inside the box. We've got 11 numbered bags of Lego, an instruction manual, and of course the dreaded sticker sheet. I'm going to go ahead and put together the Temple of the Ultimate Ultimate Weapon. I estimate this is going to be about a two hour build time, but we're going to speed this up into a 90 second speed build. And here's a completed build. This took a little bit longer than the couple of hours that I estimated. It actually took two hours and 40 minutes to put together. But it does make for a very substantial build. This thing is 15 inches wide and a massive 19 inches tall. You can get a sense of the scale with the minifigures standing in front. There are a lot of cool features on this set that I want to show you, but we'll need to get in a little bit closer. Before we do, Let's take a look at those minifigures. Here are all seven minifigures we get inside the set. From left to right we have Kai, Nia, Lloyd, Zane, Cole, Jay and Garmadon. In my opinion this is by far the best lineup of minifigures you'll find in any of the Ninjago movie sets. It's great to get all six of the ninjas in one complete set and it's great that they're all wearing their ninja gear with their civilian hairstyles. And of course each comes with their own signature weapon. Let's go ahead and take a look at each minifigure in a little bit more detail. The first minifigure is Kai, he's the Red Ninja and the Elemental Master of Fire. And his signature weapon is the Katana, and he's actually got a pair of those in a sword holder mounted on the back there, which is a very nice piece. Uh, if we look at his printing here, you can see he's wearing these black pants with some uh, almost like diamonds, red diamonds printed on there going down onto the pants. Uh, on the front we've got the kimono or the outfit that he wears, and a little bit of metallic printing shining through at the collar line. 
fine. Now his hair is pretty awesome. I mean that looks like uh, peaks of meringue. That must take a lot of gel to keep it like that. Uh, let's just take a look at that expression. Quite a mean expression there. Looks like he's been fighting and he's got a little bandage over his eye there. And if we turn him over, we do have an alternate expression on the back, presumably reserved for the end of the fight when he's a little bit happier. So let's pop that back on. Looks a little bit like Mr. Whippy, but that is Kai, our red ninja. Next we have Nia, she's Kai's younger sister and the elemental master of water. She's carrying her signature weapon which is the tasseled spear. And that's a very impressive piece of weaponry. I really like that, I really like this tassel piece on the end there, uh, which is a little bit like the one you'll see on Lloyd's sword. Let's take that away for a moment so we can look at her impressive ninja uniform. Uh, as you can see we've got some really nice metallic printing on the front there with some Japanese lettering. Uh, she's also wearing this little uh, robe piece, this kind of skirt around the, the back and the front. Uh, she's also got a metallic emblem on the back of her uniform. So that's a very nice printing. Uh, also got metallic printing on the arms, which is very nice to see. Uh, I really like Nia's hair element here. We've got the black hair with the silver hairband. And if we pop that off for just a second, we can see her expression, which is uh, definitely not to be messed with. Turn it around and... Uh, yeah, I was hoping to see a big smile on the back there, but uh, I guess Nia doesn't really do smiles. Uh, but she's an awesome minifigure, definitely one of my favourites from this collection. And if I can put her hair on, there we go. So that is, uh, that is Nia. The third minifigure is Lloyd Montgomery Garmadon. He's the Green Ninja and the Elemental Master of Energy. And judging from your comments on my other videos, uh, it seems that he's one of the more popular ninjas. Certainly you guys are trying to find him in the blind bags, which is very cool to hear. And this is a very cool minifigure. Uh, now Lloyd, of course, is son of Garmadon and Misako otherwise known as Coco to her friends. Now he's a very cool looking minifigure. He comes here with his signature tasseled sword. I really like that gold tassel element on the end there. I'm just gonna take that out of the way so we can take a look at him. I really like his hair. I like the way this blonde hair kind of shakes down over his face. And he's got a very nicely printed uniform there. We're printing on the pants and printing on the torso. Also got some gold metallic detailing on the shoulders and at the collar. Let's just take a look at the back. Yeah, a little bit more muted on the back. We've got the green dojo symbol there. And let's take a look, see if we've got another expression on the back. Hopefully we've got a big smile from Lloyd. And yeah, we kind of do, yeah. That's uh, an interesting expression, let's say that. And that is the very impressive green ninja, Lloyd Garmadon. Next we have Zane, he's the white ninja and the elemental master of ice. He's also the world's first nindroid. Yes, he's not a human, he's a robot. And uh, he's got some very nice printing on the front there, on the torso. I can see we've got some metallic printing for this, uh, what looks like either a cell phone or a walkie-talkie. Also some very nice printing down onto the pants, including some printing there for the shoes. Uh, so very nice. He's got these black hands here because he's a robot and he's carrying his signature weapon, this bow and arrow. And on the back he has a quiver with uh, additional arrows for him to use. A little bit of printing as well on the back there. Now we don't have an expression on the back of his face, but if we pop off that uh, extreme haircut, you can see we've got all of this dappled uh, I guess hair, as if his hair's been shaved around the sides. And then we've got this great, real fun flat top haircut on the top and the signature glaring blue eyes. So that is Zane the Nindroid. This is Cole, he's the Black Ninja and the Elemental Master of Earth. And he has his signature weapon, the hammer. This is actually constructed from four different Lego elements. We've got the shaft there, uh, one of these pieces with a hole in, and then a couple of elements to make up the shape of the hammer. So that's very cool and looks like an effective weapon. Uh, he has some really detailed printing on. I really like all of the metallic gold on the front here. Got some Japanese lettering on the front of his outfit and even some gold stripes on the front of his pants. Let's have a look at those arms. He usually has bare arms and this kind of vest style Ninja uniform, uh, we've got some printing on the cuffs here. And if we turn him over, some really nice gold printing on the back as well. If we take that hair piece off, actually this is a really nice hair piece. He's got a brown headband running through it and the black hair actually sits over the headband. So that's a very nice molding. And we can see we've got this signature expression there with those, those very dark eyebrows. And if we turn him over, 
Yeah, he's lightened up a little. We've got a bit of a smile going on there. So let's put his hair back on. So we can take one last look. And that is Cole. Next up, we've got the Blue Ninja and Elemental Master of Lightning. This is Jay Walker. And somebody at LEGO definitely had a sense of humour when they gave him that name. He is here with his signature weapon, which is a chain and spike, or you might call that a flail, I guess. Uh, that's a very dangerous looking weapon, so we're going to put that out of the way. Let's take a look at this blue uniform here. Uh, we've got some nice detailed printing there, a little bit of orange poking out at the collar, and uh, yeah, he's certainly got some utility pouches on his uniform, a little bit more orange printing down there on the pants. We flip him over, you see you've got the orange logo on the back and some more blue detailing. Uh, if we take a look at his face, he's got a very scruffy haircut as Jay Walker. Uh, quite a little concerned expression there. If we flip him over, he's definitely lightened up. I really like the uh, the freckles on this character. It really makes him look quite childlike. And uh, if we put that back on, that is our blue ninja, Jay Walker. And finally, we get to the bad guy. This is Garmadon. In fact, this is Jungle Garmadon. Now, he's not exclusive to this set. I believe we get exactly the same minifigure design in the Master Force set, which I don't have yet. That's uh, That's got to come soon. And he has his signature weapons, these four katanas, which look very intimidating indeed. I'm not going to try and take those out of his hands because we'll be here all day. Uh, he has a very intimidating expression there and lots of printing down the many torsos. You can see he's got a very hairy chest chest and way too many abs. Also the printing continues down onto the legs. If we flip him over, I don't believe there's any print, oh there is printing on the back here, we've got some blue detailing across there and you can see this detailing, this little cape, jungle cape on the back and then of course he is topped off with this signature conical hat which is very similar to what Master Wu wears uh, but obviously in the darker colour to complement Garmadon's darker personality. And there he is, that's our roundup of seven minifigs. With the minifigures put to one side, we can now take a look at the Temple of the Ultimate Ultimate Weapon in a little bit more detail. The temple is built on a rocky foundation and presumably set in quite a humid place because there's lots of algae on these rocks. From this side, you can see that the rock foundations are not symmetrical, which makes for a really realistic build. You can also see we've got this large rock element on the front here, which is actually hiding a secret feature. If we pull down this lever here, we can actually break away that rock segment, revealing a secret entrance into the temple. The steps leading up to the temple are very rustic, and if you peer underneath, you can see another interactive element to the playset which we'll reveal later. Looking down onto the steps, you can see they're roughly paved with decorated tiles. Now, one disappointment here is that all of those tiles are stickered pieces. In fact, stickers do make up quite a lot of the detailing in this set. The entrance is very imposing and will definitely make any ninja think twice about stepping foot through the door. The door itself is also very impressive. I really like the use of red tiles and those offset very nicely against those silver elements used for the spikes on the doors. All of the detailing you see around the door are stickered pieces, uh, but I took extra time to put those on straight, so hopefully those look pretty good. Moving up, you can see more traditional Japanese architecture on the roof. And I really like the blue colour that they've chosen for this. A lot of elements went into building up the roof section above the door, and I think this gives a really nice detailed finish. Even the finials on the roof show a lot of attention to detail, and if you look really closely, you can see that some of those finials are actually scorpion Lego elements. Moving up further, we've got a tower on top of the temple. I guess this would traditionally be a bell tower, but in this case, we've got what looks like blue flames, which is made up from a blue crystal surrounded by translucent blue Lego water pieces. And nearing the very top, we've got some more intricate roofing detail, leading to an antenna at the very top with this ball element. And if we lift that up, that will just slide back down. Kind of reminds me of Times Square on New Year's Eve. So that was all the eye candy at the front, but all the cool stuff's around the back. Would you like to see? Sure you would! This is very much the business end of the set and where most of the fun stuff happens. We've got a main entrance hall and rooms on both sides, above and below. But I think we'll start our tour down here in the dungeons, and it looks like somebody has spent rather too long down here. There's not very much to see in the east dungeon. We've got the guest that Garmadon forgot to feed and a little snake cozying up in the other side. However, in the west wing of the dungeon, we have this breakaway piece of wall and this opening gate. Pair those with the secret breakaway rock face at the front of the temple and we have the perfect way for our ninjas to sneak in. The large ornate doors swing inwards to reveal the entrance hall. 
But as Nia is about to find out, staying inside the temple and staying safe is a little bit more difficult than getting inside. First of all, she has to avoid the secret trapdoor, which can be opened by pulling this lever here. She also needs to watch out for that suspiciously cracked floor tile. I'm guessing Nia hasn't looked up and seen that rock dangling above her head. The rock can be activated using this lever here. And that is definitely going to keep the ninjas out of the temple. I think we should see that just one more time. In the interest of science, of course. On top of the mechanism that works the trapdoor, we have this chest. And if we lift the lid off, you can see this is actually filled with what I think are ninja throwing stars. Inside the east wing, we have this beautifully decorated Japanese scroll room. In fact, I think we should send Lloyd in there to investigate. I don't think Garmadon's going to be very impressed with Lloyd reading his secret plans. In fact, Garmadon's put in a defense mechanism for just this occasion. Notice we've got this button just here, and if we press this in, it activates a defense mechanism. What we actually have is a disc shooter hidden underneath the scroll, and it shoots these things out at foot level. I don't think Lloyd's going to be doing that again anytime soon. Above the scroll room, we've got a small storage area, complete with a box of swords, a vase protected by a snake, a bag of unknown contents, and looking down over the entrance hall, we've got this little function here. Unfortunately for Jay, he stepped into the temple at just the wrong moment, and he's about to get TNT dumped on his head. No booby traps in the lower level floor on the west wing, unless you count that statue, which looks suspiciously alive. In the room above, we've got a beautiful ceremonial stand with a golden metallic sword. There's also a head there, which looks like it might belong to the guy in the basement. But if Cole's thinking about taking that sword, he'd better think again, because there is a booby trap in this room. We've got this cog here, and if we turn it, we reveal a sword, which is coming down to hack him to pieces. That's it for the rooms inside the temple, except for these two small crawl spaces in the attic. It doesn't look like anybody's been in here in a very long time. And this side is home to an eight-legged friend. Beyond that, we've got this decorative stickered panel, and we're back to the blue flames. One last thing about the temple which I almost forgot to show you is this very cool hanging cage made of skeleton elements. We even have a set of doors on it which we can open up, to put a minifigure inside. The only problem with the cage is that Garmadon's too tall, and most of the other ninjas have spent way too much time styling their hair to fit inside, so bad luck, Zane. With so many cool minifigures and a large build temple complete with all of those booby traps, you could almost say that LEGO didn't need to do anything else to justify the $100 asking price. But this is truly the gift that keeps on giving, and we get these two fantastic Temple Guardian builds alongside everything else. If we put a minifigure in there as well to give you a sense of scale, you can see that these temple guardians are by no means filler. We have a matching pair of fully articulated builds here and they are so cool. As the builds are identical, we don't need to take a look at both of them, but let's get up close and personal with one of these demonic temple guardians. Starting with the head, you can get a sense of how detailed these builds are, and there are multiple points of articulation even in the head. You can turn the ears like so, the eyes pitch up and down, or the eyebrows even, and the mouth opens and closes. We even have a ball joint in the neck so the Guardian can look up, look down, look left, and look right. In fact, he can turn his head through 360 degrees. Each Guardian comes with four legs, and each of those legs has multiple points of articulation, which actually makes it really difficult to get both of the things sitting so they look identical at the same time. The front legs are equipped with ball joints, so you can move them any which way you want. And the paws here are articulated as well, again on a ball joint, so you can move these around to any kind of articulation you need. We've got a slightly smaller ball joint on the back, but again, it gives it a great deal of articulation. And again, we can move those paws however we want them to be. From the back, you can see we've got some very nice sculpting along the spine of the Guardian. And at the front, we've got this very cool rounded chest plate, which is an element I've not seen used before. I don't think it's exclusive to this set, but it's definitely a first time for me. So before we wrap up this review, I just wanted to share some thoughts on the set as a whole. 
With the $100 price tag and so many other sets in a Ninjago movie range, such as the mechs, which looked very, very cool, I just didn't really think about getting this up until now. Of course, the 20% off at Toys R Us really helped, but I'm actually really, really pleased I got this set. I've said it once and I'll say it again, it's awesome to get all of the six ninjas in the same box. And I'm also really, really pleased with the Temple Guardians that came with it as well. The temple itself didn't really appeal to me on the box, and I thought I was paying a lot of money for something that I wouldn't enjoy. But there are so many cool play features in there which you can't really appreciate just by looking at the box. So overall, this set gets one of my highest recommendations. I think it's easily overlooked, but I do think it's a great build. I think it's good value at $100, and even better value if you can get it cheaper. So that was set number 70617, Temple of the Ultimate Ultimate Weapon from the Ninjago movie. I do hope you enjoyed this unboxing, speed build and review video. Please don't forget to leave a like down below. And if you enjoyed this Ninjago review video, there are loads more on my channel. So be sure to check out the Ninjago movie playlist and I'll put a link to that on screen now. I release two new LEGO review videos every single week, so if you've not already done so, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more awesome LEGO content. Thanks a million for checking out my channel today, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next build video.